students and welcome to the lecture on Customer Relationship Management Fundamentals. After this lecture, we will be able to learn the following objectives. Explain customer relationship. Discuss the theoretical perspectives of relationship. Explain the stages of relationship. Define the relationship marketing. Discuss the focus on CRM. Explain the CRM's evolution in the industry. Explain the success factors in CRM. Let's start with the introduction on Customer Relationship Management Fundamentals. Customer Relationship Management, or CRM, is a term representing the business strategy built around the concept of improved customer service. CRM practice involves all aspects of communication and the dealings an organization has with its client, whether it is product or service linked. More clearly, CRM aims at increasing customer satisfaction, consequently increasing a business's income. The expression customer relationship management has only been in use since the early 1990s. Since then, there have been many attempts to define the domain of CRM as a relatively immature business or organizational practice. A consensus has not yet emerged about what counts as CRM. Even the meaning of the three-letter acronym CRM is contested. For example, although most people would understand that CRM means Customer Relationship Management, others have used the acronym to mean Customer Relationship Marketing. CRM is a blend of operational processes, methodologies, and technologies that help organizations create two-way interactions with customers, thereby enabling them to better understand and anticipate the behaviors, needs, and wants of existing and potential customers. Parts of CRM. In order for any action in CRM to be successful, it requires consistent data about customers which will be accessible to every employee of a company. That is also highly demanding on a technology providing CRM in a company. Analytical CRM. The purpose of analytical CRM is customer data analysis. It's evaluation, modeling, and prediction of customer behavior. Operative CRM. Operative CRM mainly supports the actual contact with customers conducted by front office workers and general automation of business processes, including sales of products, services, and marketing. Collaborative CRM. Collaborative CRM enables all companies along the distribution channel, as well as all departments in a company, to work together and to share information about customers.
Characteristics of CRM Relationship management is a customer-oriented feature with service response based on customer input, one-to-one -one solutions to customers' requirements, direct online communications with customer and customer service centers that help customers solve their questions. Salesforce automation. This function can implement sales promotion analysis, automate tracking of a client's account history for repeated sales or future sales, and also coordinate sales, marketing, call centers, and retail outlets in order to realize the Salesforce automation. Let's now discuss the customer relationship. Customer relationship is ways in which the company communicates and deals with existing customers. While customer contact through direct email offerings is a useful component of CRM, it's more of a technique for implementing CRM than a program itself. Relationships are not built and sustained with direct emails themselves, but rather through the types of programs that are available for which email may be a delivery mechanism. Theoretical Perspectives of Relationship From the theoretical perspective, the rapid development of information and communication technologies occurring in the past 20 years is considered to be the main driver of CRM. The main thrust of this is in particular the use of information technologies and algorithms from statistics and operations research to increase efficiency in customer-related company processes. One can observe two fundamental directions of CRM development from a technical perspective. Operational and analytical CRM systems. Stages of relationship. The implementation of a customer relationship management solution is best treated as six stages of a relationship, moving from collecting information about one's customer and processing it to using that information to improve one's marketing and the customer's experience. Stage one, collecting information. The priority here should be to capture the information that one needs to identify one's customer and categorize their behavior. Those businesses with a website and online customer service have an advantage as customers can enter and maintain their own details when they buy. Stage two, storing information. The most effective way to store and manage customer information is in a relational database, a centralized customer database that will allow one to run all systems from the same source, ensuring that everyone uses up-to-date information. Stage three, accessing information. With information collected and stored centrally, the next stage is to make this information available to staff in the most useful format. Stage four, analyzing customer behavior. Using data mining tools in spreadsheet programs, which analyzes data to identify patterns or relationships, one can begin to profile customers and develop sales strategies. Stage five, marketing more effectively. Many businesses find that a small percentage of their customers generate a high percentage of their profits. Using CRM to gain a better understanding of one's customer's needs, desires, and self-perception, one can reward and target one's most valuable customer. Stage six, enhancing the customer experience. Just as a small group of customers are the most profitable, a small number of complaining customers often take up a disproportionate amount of staff time. Now we will study relationship marketing. Relationship marketing is a strategy designed to foster customer loyalty, interaction, and long-term engagement. This customer relationship management approach focuses more on customer retention than customer acquisition. The relationship marketing approach is quite a bit different. This approach is really based around creating long-term clients and 
to do that, basically, we look at all of our touches being really personalized, relevant, and customer-centric so that every touch that we send out, whether that's an email or a direct mail, is taking information that we've gathered from previous interactions with the prospect and delivering then targeted messages based on that information. These programs are usually multi-touch nurturing programs that are based on where the prospect is in the buying cycle and what information they've provided previously, whether that's demographic, psychographic information, information about their needs, interests, or pains. And it's really targeted to that information. So let's take a look at what this looks like in a typical program. Just as before, our overall budget is $3,500, but we're going to implement a two-phase program. The first phase for our early touch will be personalized content. So we're going to create some highly segmented touches that really are personalized with the prospect's name and any other information that we've gathered in our marketing database. Now differently in this program, because we're going to have two touches, the second touch will be nurturing. So we're going to only put $2,500 of our $3,500 budget into this. And that would result in about a 2,000 uh, mail drop. And surprisingly though, because you personalize, all of the research shows that you can double your response rates. So rather than generating 60 inquiries as our traditional program did, we're able to, with a smaller list size, generate 80 inquiries. And the cost per response is only $31. Now again, let's say that our sales team is able to close 20% of those. And that results in 16 sales and for our $1,000 product, $16,000 in revenue. Now that is $4,000 more than what we had previously. Now if we take it a step further and add a nurturing step on to all of those prospects who said that they were just interested, so we're going to nurture them with a few touches and we'll add our additional $1,000 that we had available for our budget to do this to do six touches to nurture those just interested prospects. Now because these prospects have already been in contact with our company and they've dealt with us before, generally we see much higher response rates. So let's say that we have a 35% response rate, we can generate an additional 22 inquiries at $45 per response marketing cost. Now again, these people have been in contact with us before and so it's likely that our sales conversion rate will be higher as well. So we can tack on another eight sales or $8,000 in revenue and drive our marketing cost then down on those to $125. So let's look at the overall results for this program. With the relationship marketing approach, for the same investment, we had 102 inquiries total. That's compared to 60 inquiries we had in the traditional marketing approach. And our cost per response was only $34. We doubled our revenue and our sales, so rather than 12 sales, we had 24 sales and $12,000 more in revenue. So as you can see, with relationship marketing, we were able to produce 70% more inquiries and 100% more sales and revenue. Relationship marketing is designed to develop strong connections with customers by providing them with information directly suited to their needs and interests, and also by promoting open communication. This approach often results in increased word of mouth activity, repeat business, and a willingness on the customer's part to provide information to the organization. Business organizations today have begun to recognize and consider the human quotient as well as the emotional quotient of business relationships. Relationship marketing has evolved as a discipline that helps the businesses to look beyond transactions to long-term business associations. Successful relationship marketing strategy helps the organization deepen and strengthen its revenue streams on a long-term basis. Evolution of relationship marketing. Marketing management has evolved to become a multifaceted and an all-embracing science over a period of time. Studies in marketing do not involve the four P's anymore. The markets, geographies, the consumer segments have changed leading to multi-tier and complex networks and relationships. Purpose of Relationship Marketing 
The purpose of relationship marketing cannot be dwindled down to just one answer because there are several reasons why a business would want to implement a CRM system. That said, perhaps the most obvious purpose of customer relationship management is to help a business keep customers. Along with that, it helps the business understand what it needs to do to get more customers. Approach towards marketing. A method of determining the appraisal value of an asset based on the selling price of similar items. The market approach is a business valuation method that can be used to calculate the value of property or as part of the valuation process for a closely held business. Paradigm shift. A paradigm shift reflects change from one way of thinking to another. It doesn't just happen, but rather it is usually driven by agents of change. The term paradigm is used to indicate a constellation of concepts, ideas, approaches, and principles shared and used by a scientific community to define research problems and solutions. Historical perspective. The marketing concept is a matter of increased marketing activity, but it also implies better marketing programs and implementation efforts. In addition, the internal market in every company has become as challenging as the external marketplace due to diversity and many other social and cultural issues. Let's now learn how to focus on CRM. CRM is an acronym that stands for Customer Relationship Management. It describes the strategy that a company uses to handle customer interactions. One example of a common CRM strategy is the rewards card program offered by many supermarkets. The store gives its customer a free card that gives them access to special deals and discounts when they swipe the card during checkout. But that card also tracks everything the customer buys and allows the store to create an extremely detailed customer profile based on his or her purchasing habits. Armed with that information, the store can then offer its customers targeted coupons and other programs that will motivate its customers to buy more products from that store. Once a company has collected information about a customer, the next step is training its salespeople and other employees in using that information to keep the customer relationship strong. Because salespeople are often the face of the company, Theirs is an important role in any CRM program. Frequently, a customer who runs into a technical problem will phone their salesperson instead of calling up the customer service team. They already know their salesperson and probably have good feelings about him or her, or they wouldn't have bought the product from them. It's safer and easier to reach out to someone they know rather than try to explain their problems to a stranger. So even after the sale is complete, salespeople often continue to speak with customers on a regular basis. Definitions. Customer relationship management is a phrase that describes how one business interacts with one customer. Most people think of CRM as a system to capture information about one customer. However, that is only part of the picture. Emergence of CRM practice. Looking back at a snapshot history of marketing, one can see the following clear developments and progression over the last four decades. 1960s, the era of mass marketing, when Gibbs SR toothpaste began the first marketing of this kind with its black and white campaign. 1970s, saw the beginning of segmentation, direct mail campaigns, and early telemarketing. 1980s, where niche marketing made millionaires of those who were best at it. 1990s, relationship marketing. The explosion of telemarketing and call centers all set up to develop relationships with customers. The recognition of the true value of retention and the use of lifetime value as a business case. CRM cycle. 
It is known fact that every software application is intended to accomplish certain business goals. The CRM cycle basically consists of four stages, marketing, sales, product, and support. Marketing stage. In this stage of the CRM cycle, the basic focus is to identify customers by running various marketing campaigns, create the database for account and contacts, and finally generate leads by analyzing the gathered customer data. Sales stage. In the sales stage, basic focus remains on leads. Product stage. In this stage of the CRM cycle, the basic focus is on delivery of the product. Crawler CRM offers product management functionality that captures details about the product price, vendor, and description, among others. Support stage. During the support stage, the primary focus remains on resolving customer issues and providing customer support. Stakeholders. Stakeholders are individuals, groups, and organizations that have an interest in the decisions and actions of a particular business. Stakeholder engagement is the process of creating communication channels that enable stakeholders to be informed about, and in some cases influence, decision-making processes. Types of CRM. Operational CRM. It concentrates on three areas of business processes, the computerization, enhancement, and improvement of services. Analytical CRM. This is a CRM type that maintains the analysis and operations of an organizational back office. Here, the sales are not done directly to the customers. Strategic CRM. The role of this CRM type is to focus and improve the knowledge of the customer and utilize it in enhancing and customizing the customer's interactions in sustaining a strong relationship with them. While times have been tough and things are still far from easy, many businesses have turned to customer relationship management, or CRM, to help maximize revenues and keep costs low. But if one uses CRM primarily as a contact management system, one may be failing to capitalize on all ways in which it can bring one closer to one's customers. Used effectively, CRM can help to connect all the different parts of one's company, ensuring that everyone in every department and business area works together to deliver an excellent customer experience. Done well, CRM can go way beyond simply managing a particular sale, dealing with a specific service issue, or resolving a customer's complaint. Having evolved beyond its beginnings in contact management, CRM solutions now encompass not only Salesforce, marketing, and service automation, they also provide a platform for winning, keeping, and developing customers. Such has been the change in perception that CRM is now sometimes referred to as Customer Experience Management, or CEM. Success Factors in CRM The CRM technology projects can be costly, affect many employees within the organization, and can suffer from a lack of vendor support. To achieve CRM technology deployment, success requires a balanced approach Focus is on all four fundamental success factors. Process. Nearly half, 44%, agreed their CRM projects faced problems grounded in poor or insufficient definition of business requirements, inadequate business process designs, and the need to customize solutions to fit unique organizational requirements. People. More than two-fifths, or 42%, agreed that their problems were people issues, such as slow user adoption, inadequate attention paid to change management and training, and also difficulties in aligning the organizational culture with new ways of working. Strategy. Two-fifths, or 40%, agreed they had challenges related to CRM strategy, such as a lack of clearly defined objectives poor solution deployment practices, 
and insufficient solution deliverance practices. Technology. Only about one-third or 35 percent agreed they had technology deficiencies such as data problems, functional shortfalls in vendor solutions, lack of the required skill sets needed to implement the solution, system performance shortfalls, and poor usability. CRM implementation. CRM implementation steps are Identify all areas of business that touch the customer or the prospect. Identify all the business processes that manage the touch points with the customer or prospect. Select the appropriate CRM and Salesforce Automation or SFA system that will allow the business processes impacting the customer or prospect to be managed in the most efficient and effective manner. Document those business processes and train the users on the utilization of the CRM system with a focus on how that system will deliver value to their daily work lives and how it will maximize their efficiency and effectiveness in managing their relationships with their customers and prospects. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. Customer Relationship Management is a term representing the business strategy built around the concept of improved customer service. The CRM is the core business strategy that integrates internal processes and functions and external networks to create and deliver value to targeted customers at a profit. Collaborative CRM enables all companies along the distribution channel as well as all departments in a company to work together and share information about customers. The implementation of a customer relationship management solution is best treated as a six-stage relationship, moving from collecting information about customers and processing it to using that information to improve marketing and the customer experience. Relationship marketing is a strategy designed to foster customer loyalty interaction, and long-term engagement. This customer relationship management approach focuses more on customer retention than customer acquisition 